Escape from Tarkov is a Norman door. Covering topics from the scientific method, the design of everyday things, cheaters, netcode, desync, bugs. Today, we're going to explore all of the things related to Escape from Tarkov and its constant war on our expectations. This is part two of Getting Tarkov. I have to say that my favorite aspect about the universe that we live in, assuming you ignore pretty much all the people in it, is that it's coherent, consistent, logical, and ordered. It's because of this that we're able to create models of reality, construct theories that describe how the world works, theories that make seemingly absurd yet amazingly accurate predictions about the future, allowing us to understand our past and our origins. This is what science is all about, and it works because, thankfully as far as we can tell, our universe is to some degree consistent and logical. At the core of our everyday experiences, from grocery shopping to driving cars, navigating apps or websites, to playing video games, is the constant collision between our expectations and reality. Now when these experiences are designed thoughtfully and with empathy, when they're consistent and intuitive, that's how designers are successful at communicating with people interacting with their designs, giving them their intended experience. Now, sometimes things are designed purposefully to be noticed, to be enjoyed. Attention to detail, quality, reliability, beauty, feedback. These are all hallmarks of some great designs that are meant to be noticed. They're there to enhance the experience. Now, other types of designs have their success measured by their intuitiveness, how subtle and seamless they are, how little they distract you or get in your way. Now I experienced something the other day that I've experienced countless times, as I'm sure you probably have as well. Something embarrassing, something kind of frustrating, but with everything that's been going on through my head as of late, I had another one of my Eureka moments. What I experienced is in so many ways the perfect metaphor for what it means to be Tarkov. Having in common all the same causes and invoking the same negative feelings, Escape from Tarkov is a Norman door. There's this door on the 10th floor of the Vox Media office that I hate so much. In the book, The Design of Everyday Things is a wonderful dive into concepts like human-centered design and user experience. I suggest you look into this subject in your free time, maybe even give the book a read. The world would be a better place if everyone with any decision-making power understood the ideas it contains. In the meantime, I'll do my best to summarize its contents as best as I can. In it is where the author, Don Norman, describes any design that results in users doing the opposite of what the designer intends. One hallmark of a Norman door is when some attempt is made, post hoc, to make up for its shortcomings by adding more information like a sign on top of the existing design. Now, For anybody who uses doors without any trouble or ambiguity on a regular basis, doors without instruction manuals written on them in big letters, it should be no surprise how jarring and unexpected it is when you do experience this. It really should make you appreciate how successfully all those other designs fulfill their purpose. They're intuitive, subtle, hell, you don't even notice or think about it. In many ways, that's indicative of good design. Now, other aspects of good design are discoverability and feedback. When form successfully follows function, you end up with enjoyable and natural interactions with designed objects, but all too often do we encounter designs that result in many, sometimes even most, consistently experiencing some result that both the designer and user don't want. Now this can be due to little or no discoverability and feedback in the design itself. Now what's worse than ambiguity and a lack of feedback is when the feedback you do get is misleading or incorrect. Sometimes your expectations are fair and reasonable, and the designer fails you. And at this point, the design's only saving grace is to provide you with some form of feedback that can get you on the right track. What happens when a design gives you feedback that actively makes it worse? Now that's a recipe for a very, very bad time and ends up with people who are interacting with the design to feel pretty much only frustration and resentment. Now on the last episode, I talked about the piece of art known as Getting Over with Bennett Foddy. I bring this up again for a couple reasons. First, a reminder on the idea that games don't need to be fun, they can challenge your expectations in purposeful and intentional ways, they can make you feel something, experience it, live in it. Here's a quick side note. Now, getting over it is, in part, about persevering through struggles while it does everything it can to get in your way, jabbing you in a tongue-in-cheek fashion every step of the way. 
In the face of this, I would argue that this game is, for all intents and purposes, a good game, because I think it achieves what it sets out to do, to challenge your expectations and to push you to the edge, literally and emotionally. I created this game for a certain kind of person, to hurt them. Be careful though, don't mistake this idea for something it's not. A mark of a good game design, just like the design of everyday things mentioned earlier, is that it successfully communicates a message, an experience to those who play it. Being frustrating and annoying and ambiguous and repetitive are generally not good design traits, unless it's one of those rare cases where it's exactly what the designer is going for. Good games can be good while being simple, elegant, calming, relaxing, easy, cerebral, forgiving, and they can also be good while being totally the opposite, as long as they're communicating effectively. Now, I feel good about my interpretation of the feelings and experiences that I understand Escape from Tarkov to want to communicate to its players. Playing Tarkov, you're going to experience quite a lot of things, some intentional while others not. Of all the things that Tarkov is meant to be, I wholeheartedly believe that it's not meant to challenge your expectations, to confuse or mislead you. It's not there to punish you and kick you while you're down. Tarkov is like Mother Nature. It doesn't give a fuck about you and what you want or any of the other people that you're playing with or against. She's got her own plans, whether you like it or not, and you wouldn't be able to stop it even if you tried. She doesn't hate you, she doesn't want to punish you, she's simply indifferent to your existence. She's logical, discoverable, coherent, and even when she has elements of inconsistency or randomness, they come with enough frequency and regularity that the keen among us are able to make sense of it. When there's stakes on the line, the rules and the situation are understood by everybody, there's room in the mix for a bit of chaos to erupt, and we all have the ability to improvise and adapt to that chaos, that is what hardcore means. That is what makes Tarkov at its heart a hardcore game. It's cold, and it's indifferent. It's not capricious and punishing. So while at the same time we shouldn't expect Tarkov to hold our hand and coddle us through the gameplay loop, we also shouldn't expect the game to change the rules, mislead us, and want us to fail. It should give us the resources and tools we need to make our own destiny, and then stand back and enjoy the show. Anytime something happens that's antithetical to this core idea, that's indicative of a bug, an oversight, or poor design. Don't fall into the trap that all too many get stuck in, thinking that these issues are what makes the game hardcore. It might originate in the same country, but Russian Roulette is not a hardcore game. Now where we should expect our expectations to be challenged is from our opponents in the game, not the game itself. What separates skill-based games from games of chance, or moves them in one direction or another along the spectrum, it's not the random elements that exist in the game as one might think, but instead it's the degree to which the participants have agency, how their experience and knowledge can be used to their advantage, becoming proficient with whatever the core mechanics of the game are, like having a firm grasp on statistics and psychology when playing poker, honing your muscle memory, game sense, reaction time, and awareness in sports or first-person shooters, or using your critical thinking, abstract reasoning, and problem-solving skills in chess. This is what separates a veteran from a beginner. Being prepared, saying I know what to do because I've been here before, I've trained for this, and staying calm and collected in the midst of the chaos. So a silver would fucking push this because silvers don't hold sights. Ever. One on site A. They've already decided that, that we aren't going B, so they can just run through. Goose, goose. Goose is scout, I think. When inconsistency is introduced in the form of bugs, stability, or poor optimization, this is effectively the same as changing the rules of the game without the participant's knowledge, hugely detracting from any element of skill. Where we shouldn't have our expectations challenged are the core mechanics of the game itself. Something simple like player movement. But we need to first understand what these mechanics are, why they're in the game, what their purpose is, if any, and if they achieve the goal successfully. Let's examine a handful of these expectations that are commonly challenged, doing my best along the way to defend them as they are, or be critical where necessary, as a setup for me to explain what I think is the worst offender of them all. Now you might expect that bullets should impact either where the reticle of a reflex sight is placed, or where your laser is pointing. Now in this case, the problem lies with your expectation. Although it's somewhat understandable and forgivable if you've been trained on a particular kind of shooter game your whole life. The kind of game where bullets travel like laser beams, 
instantaneously hitting exactly where your point of aim indicates. This is what's known as hit scan. The games like Call of Duty, Valorant, and Counter-Strike use hit scan. It's much easier to implement, it's less taxing on the system running it, and generally more accessible for players and therefore easier to master for the masses. Now on the downside, it's not realistic as it doesn't simulate actual ballistics, a projectile flying through the air with the different physical forces acting on it causing it to travel in a non-straight line. Escape from Tarkov, on the other hand, actually does implement a much more realistic, albeit not perfect, ballistic system. Now with this type of realistic system, understanding its mechanics is key. And if you happen to understand how these sorts of systems work in the real world, this can be intuitive. Now this is an example of a feature that people might not initially understand, but I wouldn't consider it an example of a Normandor. Now if this system isn't intuitive, I would argue that it's not the fault of the design itself, but rather something that other less realistic systems in other games have forced you to assume is the norm. Tarkov uses different systems. Its underlying behavior is different than those other games, so there's no reason for us to expect that related features should be the same as well. Tarkov attempts to implement a more realistic and immersive first-person experience. Your gun has weight to it. It doesn't always point in the same direction. It gets pushed backwards as you approach a wall. If you're shot in the arms and your arms flinch and recoil, then the gun responds as if it was being held in your hands because your character model is literally holding the gun in its 3D modeled hands. Now, as you move through the environment, jogging, crouching, going prone, sprinting, strafing left and right, the gun in your hands, and as a result, where the barrel is pointing, changes appropriately. Now, because everything is modeled and represented quite accurately in 3D space, they behave as you would expect in the real world. In the real world, lasers are heavily collimated beams of light traveling in a straight line, optics are zero to specific distances, and bullets come out of the end of the barrel following a ballistic trajectory. Now, pretty much anything that you'll slap onto the side or the top of your gun to help you hit your target, from iron sights to reflex dots and long-range optics, are exactly the same thing. They're approximations of where the bullet will go. This concept is misunderstood commonly enough and far too often classified as something else. I've seen countless clips of all sorts of gameplay, including my own, where people's expectations about these features are wrong, leading them to blame anything from netcode, hit registration, how OP armor is and how bad ammo is, to cheaters and more. Take a look at this clip and you'll see a perfect example of a fight that I actually played fairly well, but I was just slightly off on my aim and didn't account enough for the laser offset I knew was there, and also didn't sufficiently adjust for the aim punch and the movement of my enemy. And when this happened the other day on stream, myself and about a thousand other people pretty much all unanimously had the same gut reaction. Something is wrong with the game. Now in this case I have to admit after analyzing the footage that this unfortunate and frustrating death was neither the game's fault nor did I make any major mistakes or misplays. It honestly could have gone either way and in this case I simply got outplayed. Now I start with this example first for a very specific reason. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's that all of us players of all skill levels, content creators, and the developers of the game will benefit from having a more honest and realistic understanding of how the game works, the systems within it, and how players understand and interact with those systems. The more we understand about the intentions of the developers, how those manifest in the gameplay experience, and where any disconnects lie, the more effectively we can all understand the source of these frustrations, determine how we can address them, and communicate this within the community. Now my decade of professional software development experience and my three years of experience within the Escape from Tarkov community have both taught me one thing. Informed and detailed feedback is invaluable and only helps improve the quality of the end product, but uninformed, unfair, lazy, or incorrect feedback is worse than no feedback at all. If the way things are supposed to work are transparent to us, and we're given what we need to be able to accurately determine if these things work as intended, then three things become immediately possible. First, we'll know when we experience something that's antithetical to the design, and we can report it. These are usually bugs. Second, we'll know when we have some sort of negative experience that's intended, like getting outplayed by a legitimate opponent using a game mechanic or strategy that we didn't expect, and that it's our responsibility as players to learn from it so we can be better prepared for something like that in the future. And finally, knowing the design intent, we can examine and interact with the features that we're given and the experiences they create, and if it seems like either the intent is flawed in some way, 
or the actual design fails to deliver on its intentions, we can propose changes to that design. Now, Battlestate can do quite a lot more to help its player base understand some of the systems and mechanics that are in the game, so that when things happen that break our expectations, we are able to determine if the disconnect is on our end or the game's. Now, we as community members can do quite a lot more to help ourselves understand how different aspects of the game work, like ballistics, armor, and health, as well as do things like record our gameplay, even if we're not content creators, which will allow us to analyze what happened, determine if we missed something, made a mistake, had other options, or if we're the casualty of bad design. Anytime any of us complains to our friends or our audiences, file a bug report, tweet some complaint, or make an angry Reddit rant, if what we're mad about isn't the actual cause of the thing we've experienced, if we're upset for the wrong reasons, all we're doing is distracting everybody from the real issues and diluting our value to the community and the developers. Now, we're all familiar with a number of existing issues in the game, some of them minor and non-critical to the core gameplay, like frustrations with lacking UX in the weapon preset system or buying and selling on the flea market. We should all do our best to consider ways that these issues can be improved, perhaps proposing our own designs or tweaks to the design to make them more enjoyable. But at the end of the day, we need to remember that there's always a limit to resources and we should all keep our priorities realistic. There are other issues that exist that are worth shedding light on now while keeping in mind that entire systems are planned to be redesigned from scratch in the future. So we should expect those ideas to be heard, noted, and considered when the time comes for those redesigns. I've done many videos about things like the design of the quests in the game, for example, knowing that these systems as they exist today will likely not be around forever. But what I don't want to hear from anybody is the asinine idea that we shouldn't be critical of these features because they will be redone. It's crystal clear from many discussions I've had with community members and with the developers that these design flaws are not evident to many. So it's entirely possible that these systems could be redesigned from scratch with all the time and resources and everything going into them in a different way and yet still contain exactly the same problems. Providing constructive criticism before a product is done is far more valuable than after. Providing a bit more specific context into one such feature I'll get into now, zeroing, will be really helpful in this context even though I'm sure many of you have heard me talk about it before. Now we established that Tarkov has a fairly realistic representation of many aspects of ballistics with firearms like muzzle velocity, bullet drop, and height over bore one that makes it distinct from many other games in the shooting genre. Now where it starts to get a bit confusing is how, with the same related set of ballistics features, some elements attempt to be realistic, while others adopt a simpler, more accessible, and less realistic conventions of other games. When you're looking through a long-range optic in pretty much every other first-person shooter game that has zeroing, displayed somewhere on screen is a number that's going to be indicating the current distance that the scope and rifle setup is currently zeroed to. Now, when people interact with their design, whether it's a door or a video game, there's really two ways in which their behavior is going to be informed. Their prior experience with related or similar designs, and by any hints or context clues provided by your design. Now, for anybody who's played games with zeroing before, and they've been given a number for the current zeroing value, we've been trained to know and understand what that number means. We know that if our target is at the distance indicated by that number, and if we put our reticle perfectly on the intended target, our bullet should land perfectly where we aimed. But now comes the interesting part. Can the Forex pass the searing test? I'm now going to change the searing distance from 100 to 400 meters. The goal is still to hit the very bottom of the tree and in theory that is exactly where the bullet should hit if searing distance actually works. The bullet hits the bottom of the tree perfectly, meaning that searing to 400 meters worked exactly as it should. Now this is the common paradigm, what we've all been trained to know and understand in games. All you need to do to successfully use this system is have two pieces of information. The zeroing distance, which is given to you by the game, and the actual target distance, which is your job to estimate. So we're going to pull our weapon out. We're going to zero for 700. and we are going to realize that he is actually a little bit further than that, so we need to aim just, just a little high. And down he goes. If you see it actually hit his chest, it looked like. What separates this from the real world is the speed of the bullet is a constant known to the game, but isn't really relevant to your ability to use this feature successfully. Now for anybody else like me who has experience with zeroing in video games and also owns firearms and has dealt with zeroing firearms in real life, 
We understand that this kind of system where we're given a nice round meter zeroing distance number is there for accessibility purposes. We understand how complex the relationship is between what you're shooting, where you're shooting, what your use case is, how all the conditions of both your gear and the environment affect the resulting shot you take. And anybody who's honest with themselves can recognize that that level of feature complexity is not only hard to implement and maintain in a reliable and accurate way, but also won't lead to improving the gameplay experience most of the time in most ways. This is a case where we're going to put our real life knowledge and experience on the back burner, suspend our disbelief and roll with it. And when you find yourself in game playing Escape from Tarkov and you see the little 100 meter label as you look through the optic, you believe that you recognize the paradigm the game is using, one you're familiar with, like walking up to a door with a handle you've seen before. Now you can't be sure that the target you've estimated at 100 meters is exactly 100 meters, but you think you're pretty close, so you take your shot. And from your experience, you know that the gun was set up for 100 meters, so the only thing that you can conclude is that the estimate for your range needs to be adjusted. It hit really low, so maybe they're much further than I thought. Maybe 150 meters. Maybe 200 meters. Hell, I don't know, 300 meters? What the fuck? At this point, it's completely reasonable to assume that the game is broken. You've encountered some bug and should just not bother sniping until it's fixed. What the hell is wrong with you? But in reality, what happened is you just walked face first into one of Tarkov's Norman doors. Tarkov's zeroing system is unique from every other game in one significant way, and it's something that you're never told and don't reasonably have any way to determine. It leads you into a false sense of comfort because certain aspects are consistent with other games, they're familiar, but the problem is the underlying systems aren't the same, so they don't behave exactly the same way. Now, unlike the previous example I gave talking about lasers and height over bore, where you have to discard your previous video game experience and replace it with a more realistic, real-world understanding of the mechanic, this feature is much more subtle and problematic. It's a case where form doesn't quite match function. It's a Norman door. By showing you the distance label when you're aiming down sights, it's communicating something very specific to you, whether intentional or not, and that's what every other game does to communicate the same feature in the same way. If I aim at something at a distance that matches this number, my bullet will hit exactly where I aim. The problem with this is that even though it uses the same design vocabulary, the feature works differently than those other games. In fact, it works very much like real life. Now, unlike that example where it's quite evident to anybody paying attention that the lasers and the dot sights are more realistically represented in this game as approximations when you compare them together at the same time, the underlying design of zeroing is not only completely opaque to players, but actively leads them to believe that it works differently than it actually does. Now, what makes this even worse is that it's very much like a broken clock. It's right twice a day. The design of the zeroing feature as it exists isn't obviously broken. In fact, it's still useful in many cases, but not in all cases. It's effectively an accident. And in the future, this is only going to be worse if left unchanged. Now, I don't need to dive into the details further on this. If you don't believe me or want to learn more, watch my video that I did almost a year ago. All I want to convey here is that this is an example of a design in the game that while still usable, it's very much like a Norman door. It's indicative of poor design. I'm sure countless deaths in Tarkov can be attributed to confusion over this feature or features like it. And if that's the case, I'm sorry, but you got Tarkov'd. Is it my fault? No. In fact, if you continually get it wrong, is a good, and if other people continually get it wrong, good sign that it's a really bad door. So this is just one example that illustrates the challenge we all face when playing this game. In so many cases, the answer to the question, why did I lose, is unanswerable. And that's largely due to the game itself doing what it's not supposed to do, challenging our expectations, and not providing the necessary information or feedback for us to adjust our expectations. Now, as you move around the map, building to building, cover to cover, across roads and through bushes, you're likely doing one of four things, walking, running, crouching or crawling. And while players have different levels of strength, stamina and speed, the differences between the slowest and the fastest players are actually pretty small. The most successful killers in this game are the ones that have their movement, positioning and crosshair placement on point, have honed their game sense, and all the while they're able to predict where enemies will be and when, based on a combination of visual cues, audio cues, and their ability to accurately estimate player movement based on their prior experience. Now, audio cues tend to give us the initial indication of location and status, allowing us to prepare to engage the target, at which point we'll typically need to visually identify them as fast as possible 
anticipate where they're going to be based on their initial speed and direction, and allow us to lead our shots and hit our targets. Now, given that the vast majority of the time the target is either running or strafing left and right, there's really only two speeds that we commonly have to deal with. Now, one of the biggest expectation shattering problems that's been plaguing my gameplay personally for months, nonstop, is when this movement becomes erratic, inconsistent, unpredictable, and stuttery. Now, watching a handful of these clips in full speed, for the most part, they look like I'm whiffing my shots. I misplayed, and I can't really be upset about the result. Now, while there's always some element of blame that one must accept in situations like this, you can't deny that when you slow down some of this footage and take a look at the movement patterns of these players, it's not unreasonable that I've missed many of these shots. In fact, so many of these shots would otherwise have been perfectly timed and executed flicks had players not frozen in place for multiple frames at a time mid-strafe just to skip to the side left and right in the opposite direction six feet or more. I have an inch in my eye. These days, Tarkov feels a little too much like a nightmare vacation at Disney World. Everything looks so awesome, you're excited, people are having fun, after waiting an hour to get onto every ride, it breaks almost instantly. So you have to wait for them to fix the ride, let you off, and there you go, sitting in the sun, repeating the same thing on another ride across the park for another 45 minutes or an hour, just to have it break down again, 90 seconds into the ride, over and over and over. Now, while we obviously can't dismiss the prevalence of cheaters many of us have encountered, we also can't ignore that the issue is much less of a problem, especially lately. Clearly something they're doing is working. The worst aspect of the current state of the game now is the general mood, the feeling, that so many of us feel when we're playing. It's almost like a form of distrust. Most of us already spend way more time in our stash preparing for a raid than we'd like to, many having longer queue times than normal, so when we finally do get into a raid and the excitement begins, the number of times that excitement turns to frustration almost immediately is uncountable. 
spawning really close to enemies, getting 90 seconds late into raids, and getting lasered down or grenaded by unrealistic AI, all make living past the first minute of a raid much less likely than it used to. Now, in the rare case that you survive past the initial chaos of the spawns, an annoyingly large amount of time, the fights feel like they're unfair for one reason or another. Your enemies seem to have more information than you do. You get less information than you think you should have. They move erratically and somehow still manage to land seemingly disproportionate amount of headshots. When you line up what feels like a perfectly good headshot, it either bounces off their helmet, gets tanked by their arm, or hits them in the head, but doesn't kill them. When you face the AI, they can see you from ridiculous distances, through trees, fences, and dark hallways, through shrubbery and the haze that fills every map. All of their grenades fly on trajectories that you swear you've only seen playing Worms Armageddon. It's this distrust of the game and our opponents that makes us suspicious of every single player that kills us. And add on to this the issue that many content creators have of getting serial stream sniped, often by teams or cheaters, and it's no wonder that many folks now and in the past are calling bullshit more than is probably reasonable. And one of the most fruitful things I've done as a result of this project was try and gather as many angles of the same raid and the same engagement as I could, paid attention to inconsistencies, the things that made us suspicious or frustrated. Now at the core of competition against someone else is outplaying them, often by flipping their expectations. If you can make people think you're occupied, stuck out in the open with no cover, make them think that you aren't ready for them, they'll jump on the opportunity every time. But if you actually are ready for them, even if they're the aggressor, you're going to end up catching them off guard every time. Now being clever about your positioning, movement, timing, and the sounds you make, creating a mental map of all the threats around you, and running through the next thing you're going to do in the middle of dealing with your current threat, they'll make your enemies think that you've got something like supernatural abilities. And the more I look into it, the more I see just how common this feeling of unfairness, inequity, and frustration is. One of the best parts about competition is having a good game against a fair opponent you respect, even when you lose. Now we lack that context and perspective in video games, and what's worse is we rarely get access to their perspective at all, their experience. We fall for the fundamental attribution error, time and time again. How many times was the experience that you felt was unfair, whether it was a bug, a cheater, or desync, actually just your opponent successfully pulling off something that was pretty sick? Something that if you were spectating, you'd think, damn, that was awesome. Let's take a moment to look at some of the footage that I managed to gather from multiple angles, take note of all the different inconsistencies in movement, in sound, in experience, as well as the things that each person did that were clever and well played, unfortunate and unlucky, and even how simultaneously we can be outplayed and get fucked by the game. I got nothing but respect for anybody in these clips that either I killed or that killed me. We all get Tarkov sometimes. One of the hardest things to do is get discovered as a smaller streamer, so do me a huge favor and give these guys all a follow, alright? Go underground or Are these nerds? I'm dead. I think he Wrong, was. Dude. Yeah, well, that was the same guy, dude. Are you serious? Yeah, they got me. How in the world did he 
prone up that quick. Nick, I pushed right out. He's sus, dude. In my room. Hold on, someone's running over right now. That's the Ooh, boy. He got some weight, dog. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? Look at this fucking lag. I see that. You're still alive? <laughs> that is fucking bullshit, man. Yeah, you hit like two frames a second. Oh, there's a dead guy. This is great audio. They need to fix this fucking game. This is great audio. Just AK out an hour. You didn't hear shit. Oh, okay. I was like, well, I think I was closing like the gated door and then all of a sudden just shots. <laughs> just started dying. No. I'm in a let's go, don't kill me. He's still hard out of this door. I think that's you in this room. I'm dead. Yo, this guy's a gunner with the M1A, bro. He pistoled me or something. Nah, it's an M1A. Son of a- He dicked me. MP7, head eyes. Did he cheat him? I think I just died to an M1A. Head eyes. I just it's got a 5-7? Seven. Seven. You think so? I got- I got head jaws by, uh, War Mage. I got head top headed by oh some God. guy named. His name's one one zero one one one. Yeah. yeah. That's who got <laughs> Did he had oh, eyes dude, all he of us? Damn. Oh, he's using a five seven. What a beast. Damn, dicked all of us. Shouldn't peek that like that, but I didn't fucking think he would pop up like that and dick me. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't sus, but the only thing that raises questionability is the war mage in the uh, head five seven. What kind of man brings a 5.7 in War Mage in an M4? I guess a real man. Holy crap. Holy crap.
I'm sure there's at least one person watching this video that killed me in Tarkov legitimately, came into my stream afterwards to say GG, and I was salty. Maybe thinking they stream sniped, maybe complaining about cheaters, maybe I made some excuse for why I died that may or may not have been reasonable when really at the end of the day, I was outplayed. If I did, I'm sorry, and GG. I'm not perfect, no other content creator is perfect, and something tells me that you're probably not perfect either. So let's all try and be cool, keep a level head, and focus on the real issues at hand. We gotta keep our eye on the prize. Imagine a perfect world where you knew every player was legit, where you didn't encounter any bugs that caused you to lose a fight, you felt the game was fair, it performed well, it was just you against the other player. No bugs, no cheaters. That would be the ultimate experience. When some crazy unexpected shit happened causing you to lose a fight against your opponent, all you could do was say, damn, nice play. Maybe one day we'll get there. I'm sure we're going to continually make progress in that direction more and more. We just need to be patient and try and be reasonable in the meantime. Now from there, it's on battle state to improve the performance, feel, and design of the game step by step, reducing the number of times that we lose. And rather than say GG, we sit there and wonder. Were these players hackers? Was my ammo or gun glitched? Is the audio bugged? Did his armor or limbs block bullets that they shouldn't have? Did I miss all my shots on this guy? Are my distance estimations incorrect? Was that a silent grenade or silent footsteps? Was that player invisible because of cheats or some visual bug? Did I misplay in this situation? This is the fundamental issue at hand with Tarkov right now. We can't trust our senses. We can't trust what we see. We can't trust what we hear, we can't trust our previous experiences, and we can't trust that the system, the rules of the game, the fundamental foundation, is consistent between all of the players. That we're all experiencing the same things at the same time. Last Saturday, in the midst of writing the script, as I prepared to start my Saturday night stream, I noticed there was a patch available for download. Now one thing in this patch was huge, and was something that not many people knew about, but was present in the game for a long time. It was the second major contributing factor that I had a hunch was responsible for these issues that I'm talking about, and something I'll be getting into more detail on next time. You guys haven't seen many highlight videos from me lately, mostly because I feel like over the last few months I genuinely haven't had enough good content for it. But that night, something happened. Tarkov, for one night, felt like it used to. Even if that night was an outlier, and it all goes to shit again tomorrow, the Tarkov stars aligned. I got a glimpse into what Tarkov has been before, what it could be in the future. Tarkov felt like Tarkov again. And the old Veritas was back. Guitar picks, please. Three. Yes! Are you fucking kidding me?
night and day. Night and day today. Now, despite the way things have been recently, for the first time in a long time, I'm actually pretty damn optimistic about the future. I just want to say thank you to you guys in the community, my fellow content creators that have been there to support me, and Nikita and the devs at BSG for everything you guys do as well. Be safe out there.